Hello everyone and welcome, Suffolk Hobbit, and I'm very excited because my good friend Lint uh, gave me a belated birthday present, which I'm very, very pleased with. It's something I've wanted for a long, long time, but just haven't got around to having it because of all the other usual bits and bobs that a geeky hobbyist has to deal with, which is also having other armies or other like models to paint and build or different types of games to play and stuff, and it's always on the list. But every time I thought, oh, I'll get that this month. Oh, I need to get that, I need to get this, I need to get that, I need to do this, I need to paint this, I ain't have time to buy that stuff. So, anyway, very kindly, my friend Lint has bought it for me, or Holly Lint, I should say, bought it for me. And that is Kings of War, Dwarven Steel Behemoth. Oh, yes, I am very, very pleased. Very, very pleased. Oh, my camera stood a weird freeze frame. I think we're okay. We're still recording? No, it's all good. Yes, Dwarven Steel Behemoth. And here it is. This might look in reverse, this might read wrong because I've got the camera facing me. That's because of a lighting issue I had and the phone's doing all sorts of weird, strange stuff. So apologies if this is reverse, but I'm sure you can tell what I'm going on about. Like I've just told you. But here it is, the unboxing of this wonderful little machine of doom. Um, yeah, got it yesterday. I had a very quick sneaky peek at it. I haven't actually looked at it, looked at it. Although, one thing I'm, I'm actually quite intrigued by is I don't remember uh, the description I've got on the, on the, get the words out of minute, website, uh, saying if it was resin or not, it just, I think it just said a kit, I'm not sure, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, I did actually get in this quite easily earlier, but uh, for some reason it's now putting up a fight. Oh, there we go, bear with me, aha, that's the end, yeah, uh, what was that? Yes. It appears to be just resin, Forge World style, dare I say it for a rival company. But uh, yes, so this this is the box as it is. You've got two uh, Mantic points there, which is always a good thing. Um, got a little bit of box art on the back there, and the size. It's a lovely little box, nice little size, quite compact, quite decent, it's quite cool. And it shows you what you've got, what you've got, like your, th your three uh, crewmen, and then the Behemoth as it is when it's all built with all the crewmen in, so pretty cool. And we've got a little pull-out box, pulls out, and then we've got the bag of goodies, and we've got one, one uh, base, which I guess is the normal standard size movement for all the other sort of big single creatures, I'm not entirely sure actually, to be honest, I can't think of many things in a, hmm, I don't know if this is a specific size base just for this monster, unit, thing, um, too big for cavalry. Well, yeah. Anyway, so that's the base you get with this particular, uh, particular, particular piece. So here we go then. So if I get the camera just to move, just a touch down. It's a very warm May day today. Very warm. Ridiculously so. I'm not a fan of the heat, as many of my friends would tell you. Don't get me wrong. It's all good, but I think the previous slide problems. I was Nordic. I was, I was from Scotland or somewhere that's lovely and cold most of the time. That, that, that was where I come from. So, okay. Yes, it's strange. This is definitely, this is most definitely a, uh, it is, it's like, it is, to feel it and to look at it, it's very much a Forge World resin type material. Whether it is the exact type, same type of stuff, I'm not entirely sure. Hmm, intriguing. It doesn't feel doesn't feel like it's got that sort of shiny, sticky uh, weirdness to it, which obviously most forger models or, or resin generally tends to have you to clean it as such, though, as you know, as many of you know. This doesn't feel like it. This doesn't feel like it at all, actually. Um, I'll probably give it a wash just to be sure, but it actually feels pretty damn dry. It feels like you could just paint it straight off the bat, but we'll see. Well, this is the first piece. I'm guessing there's no instructions with this whatsoever, so I'm guessing. This is the, the body, it looks like the body to be honest. That's the body piece. Got the holes in the side, that's where the head goes, I assume. That's probably where the base goes for the dwarves to sit on. Nice bit of detail, if you can see that. Nice little detail, cool. So that's the first piece, awesome. It's gonna be interesting to see how well this paints up, because I get, I get a feeling a lot of this, I could probably get away with hardly painting. Maybe just in a little bit of dry brush metal, just here in a few detail sections here maybe. Just to, uh, you know, highlight it because it's got a lot of armour plating which is going to sit over this. So, 
is the first piece. It looks like at the, from the box, it looks like this is the piece that hangs from its bum. I'd imagine it's going to be like that, I guess. Something like that, maybe. So that's, that's another piece, the armor plating. And as you can see, it's quite fine, quite thin. You can see the light shining through the resin there, look. So it's quite fine, so you have to be very careful with that. But another nice detailed piece. And an interesting thing I've just noticed, actually. I'm a little bit anti forge world. Um, and it's nice to see that these pieces, the majority of them, have actually been taken off the sprues for you. Not the greatest uh, job, but it's just I appreciate the effort that someone's gone to at least try and get rid of some of the extra like sprue bits and like, lumps of plastic that hang off of these things. So you got got a leg, leg there. It's always going to connect up that way because you've got your little knobby bit there. But again, there's no no there's no stickiness to it. There's no sort of like it doesn't feel like you need any wash back to it as such, but. I will do just in case. Aha, here we go. So this is the piece which looks wrong way around. <laughs> this is the piece which the crew sit in by the looks of it. So I'm assuming that this bit just sits on top somehow. Like that. Something. Something like that. We have a little play. <laughs> Something like that. This crew piece, nice wood detailing. I'll leave that chat to last. We have got what looks like a the barrel for the flamer. Which is uh, steel behemoth has as its main weapon. It's got a little mould line there that needs cleaning up, but otherwise it's all very good, nice and crisp, nice and sharp. Simple detail by the looks of this model. It's actually quite a simple detailed model. So there's lots of detail to it, but it's it's not mad if you see what I mean. It's quite quite nice, you know. So there's another few bits. These are the tusks by the looks of it for the the because it's a goat looking machine. Uh, so there's the details. Apologies about the lighting, guys. It's a bit. There we go. So that's that. That's cool. What else we got? Oh, we've got some knee pads. Look. Now, these have been quite heavily warped, as you can see. This one is going to need a hell of a lot of TLC to get that back into shape, unless that's how it's meant to be. To be fair, that might be how it's meant to be, because strange enough, both of these are quite warped in the same spot, although. Look at this one, you can clearly see this is bent. So this is definitely going to need a bit of the hot water treatment. But otherwise, nice details, nice details, looks good. It's workable, there's nothing wrong with that. You can, you can work around that, so that's good. Um, got a lump of resin here with a few leg leg castings. A few bits and bobs there, look, the feet. Ah, oh, it's the feet, that's what it is in the box. Yes, yeah, so you got your feet there. There you go. Nice detail, simple again. On the block of resin this time, well, I can see why, to be honest, because it's quite a lot of work, but the fact that some pieces have got the blocks missing is, is a good thing. It's a good thing, I like it. Another leg. Uh, let's get through the nitty gritty bits here. So, we've got, oh, got another core. Cool. So, two more legs. I won't show you them, just in the last two. And then we have the head. Now, this is quite a mean looking head. Look at that. That has got some attitude to it. Look at that. That is cool. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. That's obviously the eyes, I assume. You know, like the nose grill type thing, if that's what they're aiming for. That is really cool. Look at that. It's a real mean, mean design. I like that. It's really quite intimidating. See that come towards on the battlefield. There's no, you know, pleasantness to it or artiness to it. That's pure, I'm going to destroy you type stuff. Yeah, that's cool. So that's the head. Again, no uh, block. You can see where the block was. Right, so they've obviously cut those bits off. Not the tidiest job, but it's gone. All we've got to do is file it, so that's perfect. And then we have, what's this? Ah, so this, these pieces are the pieces which connect up the weapon. So this bit sits just above the head on the box art. So the head's there, and this bit will sit just above it, on sort of backing up onto the actual platform the soldiers would uh, fight from. There you go. It's good. That needs a little bit of hot water, maybe, just to slightly bend this one into shape again. Otherwise, it's all good. So all in all, I'll give the actual the the Bayamoff model itself uh, nine out of ten, almost ten out of ten to be honest. But it's only because those two real heavily warped sort of leg knee pad like uh, part shoulder pads to it. They're so warped. It's gonna be quite a job to sort them out, which is a shame. But that is really that's definitely nine out of ten. I'm actually more to be honest, I'm more impressed with that than some of the forge roll stuff you get because. Just the fact that they've actually got half the pieces of what they're missing, they've taken the, the lumps of mould, you know, stuff, the, the casting mould bits off already for you, there's only a few bits with it on, you can see why they are there. Uh, yeah, it's a wicked model, looking forward to building this. And then last but not least, 
and these are really good, lovely detail. The thing I like about uh, Mantic stuff, not all of it, some of them models, some of the dwarf models I are, think are, are awful, they're just so basic there's, and they don't fit very well, but the other end of the spectrum, you've got some really good models which do fit really well into that. They're, they're simply designed, but they look really good, and I'm pleased to say that these, uh, these crewmen are awesome, they're very cool. So first up you have got the driver, the pilot, there we go, sorry about the lighting guys because we've got the sun behind me, I've just realised a bit of this might have been a bit dark, you know, apologies about that. So there's the one of the crewmen, that's the pilot by looks of it, or the one that steers it, whatever you call them, you know, chief, very cool, a little bit of arm on the side there, look, just a bit of arm around the shoulders, helmet as usual, but it's a really, really nice little bit of simple detail there, it's really cool, hopefully you can see them, that's really, really good, again resin, uh, the mould part has been nearly cut off, but it looks like they've actually left it on, oh no, this bit here, sorry. That's a bit before he screws in, that's the mould bit left over that's been snipped off, so that's cool. And then we have the weapon operator. There he is. Can we make him out? It's a job to make out, there we go. Can you see him okay? Oh, if I do that maybe. Does that help you a little bit? You can just see his head, he's got goggles on. He's got some goggles on, he's got a beard, like sort of pluming right in front over his arms. This is beard there going over his arms, arms here connecting up with a weapon here, which is where the flamethrower sits out. So he's really cool. Again, detail is really nicely detailed, but it's simple detail, it's effective, it's nice, it's not over the top. It's a shame that some of their earlier models, you know, couldn't have been like that, but who knows? Maybe they'll redo them. And last but not least, we've got the <laughs> looks like the bellows operator. I'm guessing it, it well, it is the bellows operator for the weapon. And there he is. Uh, pushing down hard, got his goggles on again, but it's you know. Got some safety when you're uh, when you're fighting evil. Got a little bit of uh, armor, helmet again as usual. Uh, nice little detail of like a gem. I'll probably paint that up as a gem myself. To be honest, on the back of his belt there. Yeah, really cool. Look at that. Simple. Really, really good. Not too bad. Oh, well, that's good. So there you go. That is the unboxing of the steel behemoth. Yeah, it's gonna be a good kit. Really, really good kit. I do like that a lot. It's um, so it's not going to be too hard a model to put together, nor to uh, actually paint as well. I think we've got well, I say it's not going to be simple, but it's going to be a straightforward model to paint, especially after my uh, recent work with um, a certain Tantalus for the Dark Elder, which has been nothing short of a nightmare. Um, but yeah, this is going to be a good model. I'm really looking forward to building this up. I'm probably going to build it with the armor plating sections off. Do the rest underneath first, a lot of basic paint and then we'll do basic painting and layers because the arm's obviously going to sit over the model, so there's no point going into massive detail when you know I could spend ages, I don't know, painting this up, spend ages, 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 and then where is it? And then stick that on top and you never see it again. So I might as well sort of just go for basic painting and if I do glue something together and then uh, realise afterwards, ah, oh, actually, I'll try and get rid of it afterwards. Only downside is that this doesn't have instructions, which I was 50-50 with, because, you know, some instructions leave a lot to be desired. Uh, this is fairly self-explanatory, a little bit of dry fitting, I think there's very, very minimum rate you're going to need to get it together. But yeah, really good kit, I'm impressed, really impressed, the, the mould lines are clean and crisp. Very little to tidy up on it, in all seriousness. Um, it does put certain other companies to shame. You know, considering the money difference, you know, what you're spending, this is quite cheap compared to something you'd buy from another company that specialises in resin stuff. And it would be covered in issues and problems and things and, you know, you have as much time building and painting as you've got to spend time cleaning the damn thing up. But, yeah, that is the unboxing of the Steel Behemoth. Buy one. I intended to buy one, but luckily my very good friend Nick and Holly bought it for me. Yeah! Please. Awesome, living the dream. So, thank you for watching, guys. As always, thank you for all your time and effort spending watching my ramblings and talking geeky rubbish. And uh, I'll see you for the next video very soon. Have a good evening, guys. Enjoy the sun, sun cream, always. Especially us pale types that just burn and crisp. It's awful. It's not good. Look like a lobster. It's terrible. Anyway, take care, guys. Rock and roll. See you soon.